Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, System of Rice Intensification. Let us try and understand what is this topic all about. When it comes to the rice production in the world, the vast majority of the world's rice is grown in Asia. India is the world's second largest producer of rice and the largest exporter of rice in the world. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section which is the largest producer of rice. India happens to be the second largest producer, which is the largest producer of rice please put it on the comment section rice happens to be the basic food crop and being a tropical plant it flourishes comfortably in a hot and humid climate rice is mainly grown in rain fed areas that receive heavy annual rainfall which is why it is also called as the karif crop in india another question from the preliminary examination point of view is which are the karif crops in india please put them on the comment section how is rice grown in India? There are two methods. One is the traditional method. The other is the system of rice intensification method. When we consider the traditional method, what exactly happens? Plants are densely seeded in the fields. They are kept completely flooded throughout the entire growing season. So the predominant method for growing the crop is to flood the paddy fields as shown in the image. Why is this being done? Flooding of rice field is the most effective cultural practice for the weed control. So in order to kill the weeds in order to prevent them from emerging what they do is flooding of the paddy fields so this particular water which is added in that field creates unfavorable conditions for the weeds by cutting off the sunlight and aeration to the ground ultimately we would have the paddy grown in this part and this will also eliminate the weed so the basic premise as to why there is excessive use of water in the paddy and the rice cultivation is primarily to prevent the growth of weeds in this place lot. Whenever we speak about rice, what exactly happens? There are two important issues that we also have to consider. Whenever there is rice that is grown, it also produces methane, which happens to be a greenhouse gas, which is more than 30 times as potent as the carbon dioxide. According to a global analysis by the Environmental Defense Fund in United States of America, methane and nitrous oxide emissions from the rice farms could have the same long-term warming impact as about 600 coal plant. Why is this happening? That is because the dominant greenhouse gases emitted from the flooded rice fields is methane produced by the bacteria in the waterlogged soil in the large quantities. However, there is another gas as well which happens to be nitrous oxide which is also produced by the soil microbes in the rice fields. So what do we have? Whenever we have the rice production, a resultant of it is also the methane gas which is released as the greenhouse gases because of the activities of the microbes in the rice fields, this is also resulting in large amount of methane that are being released in the rice producing areas. The gas emission impact includes 1 hectare of the flood irrigated. It emits about 470 kg of methane which is equivalent to about 11,700 kg of carbon dioxide. This is equivalent to about 4,700 kg of carbon dioxide that is released from the vehicle. So this is acting as a greenhouse gas. So larger the production of the rice, this will also mean more will be the methane and more will be the greenhouse gases. As we just discussed, whenever rice and paddy has to be grown, what this area requires is the constant supply of water. This entire area will have to be flooded. But in India, we are already water scarce as well. When you consider the rivers like Kaveri or Indus or Krishna and Narmada, Damodar, Godavari and many other rivers, they are already facing a lot of scarcity when it comes to some seasons as well. As a result, India is already water scarce. It takes about 2173 litres of water to produce a kg of husk rice. That is the global average. Out of this, 1488 litres is typically rainwater, 443 litres is surface or ground and 242 litres of water are required to carry off pollutants produced during the process. But when you consider India, this number spikes up and the figure is about 2688 liters so what are we doing we are also producing rice and when we produce the rice as we discussed initially india happens to be the largest exporter of rice indirectly what it also means that we are virtually exporting the water as well we are already water scarce we do not have enough water but we are growing rice as well we are exporting rice as well and this also means that we are indirectly exporting the water 
to multiple other countries. If you look into the virtual export or import, we have Japan, which states the number one country when it comes to the virtual import of water. But when it comes to the virtual export of water, we have India, which also means that we are exporting a lot of water because of rice cultivation. So what are the major issues of rice cultivation? One is that it is releasing methane, which happens to be a greenhouse gas. And this is ultimately leading to climate change variations. And two, whenever we are producing rice, it requires a lot of water. This requirement of lot of water also means that indirectly, we are not only exporting rice, but we are virtually exporting water as well. These are the major problems when it comes to rice. In order to overcome this issue, in order to overcome the traditional method of rice cultivation, what we have as a new method is called as the SRI, which also stands for System of Rice Intensification. So going forward, the System of Rice Intensification will be called as SRI. This method, Sri, was first developed in Madagascar during the 1980s by Henry D. Lonne. What is this method all about? When you consider the traditional method, what you have is extreme quantities of water that is required to be flooded in that plot of land. But when it comes to Sri or the system of rice intensification, the amount of water that is used is comparatively reduced. How is this process working? Whenever you have to consider the Sri method or the system of rice intensification, what you have to do is conduct the plowing activity. So the seedings get transplanted at a very young age and followed by this only single seedings instead of handful of seedlings can be planted in each hill. What do we understand by this? When you consider the traditional method, you have large number of seedlings which are placed in that plot of land. But when it comes to the SRI, what we have is a single seedling that is planted in that plowed area. And as a result, this will require much less water in comparison to the traditional method and when we speak about this SRI the plants are spaced wider apart in a square pattern as shown in the image you have the field that is plowed and after which there are these square plots that are drawn and in these square plots what you will have is single seedlings that are planted in this region followed by this intermittent water application to create wet and dry soil conditions instead of continuous flood irrigation when it comes to the traditional system what you had is continuous supply of water but when it comes to this SRI what we have is intermittent supply of water so when we speak about intermittent supply in the traditional planting system you would require water for about 35 to 40 days under normal flood conditions but when it comes to this SRI it does not require continuous flooding and all it requires is intermittent irrigation indeed the plant root should not be starved of oxygen through the flooding and irrigation is given to maintain soil moisture near the saturation initially and water is added to the field when the surface soil develops airline cracks. So only when there is development of these airline cracks that are happening on this plot, that is when water is again supplied in this particular process. After which, rotary weeding to control weeds and to promote soil aeration. When it comes to the traditional setup, what we have is water that is put on that particular plot to prevent the growth of the weeds. But in this particular setup, what we have is the weeding method which is done continuously. It is done after 10 to 12 days after planting. Weedings can be undertaken every 12 to 15 days and in fact this particular process also encourages weed to grow in spaces between the plants. Then there is meticulous weeding ensures pests do not intrude into this particular area. In fact the rice plant also sucks away nutrients from the weed as well. So in this particular area there is no flooding of water but instead what we have is the rotary weeding where weeding process removal of the weeds takes place 12 to 15 days every now and then and finally there is increased use of the organic fertilizer to enhance the soil fertility when it comes to the traditional setup what you have is the chemical fertilizers which are used constantly but when it comes to this method what we have is the organic fertilizers and when we employ all these methods this will also lead to significant increase in the production and at the same time there is minimal use of water as well and when there is minimal use of water and when when we are making use of the organic fertilizer, this will also result in increased soil fertility, further boosting the production. So what are the advantages of this SRI? 
higher yields can be expected both grain and straw this will also require reduced duration as well by about 10 days lesser chemical inputs lesser water requirement less chaffy grain percentage grain wheat increased without change in the grain size higher head rise recovery without cyclonic gales cold tolerance soil health also improves through biological activity so basically when we are making use of this method the paddy fields are not flooded but they are kept moist during the vegetative phase and this will also require less quantity of seeds as well but the yield would be comparatively more the cultivation requires less water involves less expenditure gives more yield thus it is beneficial for the small and the marginal farmers however there are also challenges and advantages what are these challenges one higher labor cost in the initial years why that is because whenever you have to grow what you require is the single seedling that needs to be placed in that particular plot as a result initially when you have to grow what it will require is the higher number of people who are employed as part of this process difficulties in acquiring the necessary skills people get acclimatized to the traditional method even if you want to make use of the modern method people may not change and this may be the main major impediment not suitable when no irrigation source is available when irrigation source is not available this could also act as an impediment so this will require stricter water control practices this will also require more laborers this will also require skill for transplanting and weed menace is relatively higher in comparison to the conventional transplanting so going forward since this is an area which is new into the research what we have to do is conduct further studies and this also means that we have to conduct more studies invest money into this particular area and if people have been able to extract more yield and if there are more advantages people should also be given this knowledge transfer so ultimately what we will have is the mitigation of the climate change factors with respect to methane and at the same time we will also have less use of water in this particular process so the water scarcity maladies of rice cultivation can ultimately kept a check in this particular process it is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best